Welcome. In some denominations, you'd make a trip to the pastor's study for answers to the really tough questions. Well, let's see what we can do here. Merry meat, as the saying goes. Depending on your where you associate with us, I'm Iden Odinson, High Priest of the Temple of Gaia, or Bishop Kell of the Universal Episcopal Church. And I love both roles, and I see them. I see myself as building a bridge. You heard me talk about that last time, Well, I want to give you a, some specifics this time. Well, at least. Your bridge, and I'm not going to talk about who, if you're thinking I'm going to talk about, well, this individual in this pantheon was the same as this individual in this pantheon, and oh, look at how this story sounds just like this other story. No, I'm not going to. We've got more important things. I am going to relate between what I just put out on the Secrets in Plain Sight and what you're going to find for this week in Church Back Home. Because there's a principle there that I think needs to be dealt with. There is, in the sixth Sunday after Trinity, for those of you who've been watching Church Back Home, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. And didn't I just get done talking about in the secrets in plain sight about how our one true enemy was not what I thought it was? Ignorance. No, it's not ignorance. It's a combination of ignorance and lies presented as truth. Now, how do we put those two together? And how would that apply to a Wiccan as well as to a Christian? Well, I'll tell you. And it doesn't matter whether your prayers or whatever you call them are directed to Cornunos, El Shaddai, Mar Yeshua, Thor, Odin, Amidaba, otherwise known as Amidabutsu, to the Japanese. Doesn't matter. What was the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees? Nitpicking. That's what it was. Nitpicking. Having their lives in such impeccable order that you could practically tell what they were going to do by looking at the calendar and on the list of do's and don'ts. Yeah. And those Pharisees would have their nice proper clothes, their waxed beards, and all that. And that was their righteousness. Now, if you've ever taken any kind of business administration or public administration courses, or any kind of leadership courses or management courses, you would know that that is being the difference between form and substance. 
And in the Christian Bible, Jesus goes even further. Later on, he talks about how a hoity-toity types in the temple. Oh, thank you that you didn't make me like that guy back there. Meanwhile, that guy back there says, Lord, have mercy upon me, a poor sinner, etc. Yeah. The substance is what it's all about. It doesn't matter nearly as much whether your incense burner has the right kind of incense in it. Oh, I remember at a wedding rehearsal somebody kicking sand over that issue. Making sure that the incense doesn't have such and such in it. And if they knew what they were talking about, they'd know that the such and such that they were talking about wouldn't have even been appropriate for just about anything except for one thing, and I'm not getting into that. Nasty business. No. And then there was the young acolyte. Not me, but an acolyte in an Episcopal church in New Mexico. And this was his own story to me that he... Well, in the days before air conditioning, they had all the doors and windows open in the summer. And a breeze came through and he was afraid that the wind would blow out the candles and that would invalidate the communion. Yeah. Someone was actually worried about that. And oh, if you do nine Hail Marys instead of ten, or if you do eleven Hail Marys instead of ten, does that do something? Or if you happen to repeat a particular chant a different number than the magical three, five, seven, or nine, does that have some? Is that going to invalidate it? I don't think so. But what they're after, what the divine is really after, and I don't care what name or names you give to the divine, I don't think that that's what they care about so much as the fact that we express our appreciation, that we express our adoration, that we express our love to them. That's what they enjoy. Think about it. Odin hanging on the tree for the sake of man. Odin hanging from the tree for nine days. Yeshua on the cross. The worst, most degrading form of capital punishment ever known to man. And so many others. Comes from love. And if you don't if you want somebody to love you, one of the things that you do not do is make them be afraid of you. You don't. That's where the word fear, I kind of cringe because people get that wrong. In the Elizabethan era, fear could just as easily mean respect as being afraid. And no. I don't think any god or goddess wants you to be afraid. They do want respect, but they don't want you to be afraid. And so let's put the nitpicking behind. Form is nice, but let's not trip over ourselves on it. And let's not use substance as an excuse to ignore the form when we should be paying attention to it. But let's also pay attention to what we're doing this all about and what we're doing it for. And understand the substance. And seek that. Do that and we'll accomplish something. I say we because I'm including me in that. Blessed be.
This has been a presentation of the Wise Ones Net. Merry part and blessed be.